Welcome to Ignite Your Confidence for women in leadership who want to speak up and stand out. I'm your host, Karen Laus. Here you'll get all of the tips and tools that you need to stand out with unshakable confidence. Let's dive into today's episode. Let's talk about how to start a presentation. So often what happens is we jump in with these pleasantries. At my old company, we called them the lovely bunch of words. This whole pleasantry. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad to be here. I'm thrilled to be here. I can't wait to discuss this with you. And what's happening if we do it that way is not only are we losing time, we are losing their attention span, even more importantly. What we want to do instead is to jump right in with a story, an analogy, an anecdote, or a statistic, something that's going to be different. And the thing about this is that you will stand out because most of us are socially conditioned to hear those pleasantries up front. And when you are different, you stand out. Recently, I was co-facilitating with someone and he started out the talk and he started with some historic context, which was helpful for the client. He had worked with them before and I had not. And it was really an interesting dynamic because when he started, he said, you know, thanks for being here. You know, last time when we discussed this, such and such, here's where we're at now. And then I remember thinking, I have to model what I preach. And as soon as he was done, instead of introducing myself, the way I introduced myself was through an example. So the first thing that's out of my mouth was, well, I said, hello, but I said, hello, I'm going to introduce myself through a story that's relevant to what we're talking about today. And then I jumped in with the story. What was interesting, I could feel an energy shift, but also the feedback from the co-facilitator was, wow, I, I got up there and, and thanked them and told them context, but it really felt like things took off when you started. Now, I'm not trying to beef myself up by telling you that it's simply a really important thing to notice. How are you starting off? Are you grabbing their attention right away? And uh, there's so many factors that we have to think about here. We have to realize that we have to earn the right to get their attention. It isn't automatic. Now, let me say one other thing. It's not as if an audience, and you know this from being in an audience, it's not as if the audience are, is thinking, oh, wow, I really hope she's a bad speaker or wow, I really hope that <laughs> I'm bored and I can multitask while she's talking. It's more the fact that when we jump in like that, we are going to grab their attention so that they will keep listening and they're going to feel really engaged by what we're talking about. And if we do that up front, they're going to feel like, oh, I want to keep listening to this person. This person's different because 90% of all speakers, and you may not consider yourself a speaker, and you know that my tips are around everyday communication. So whether you're starting up a meeting or whether you're formally presenting, either way, you want to jump right in. An audience does not need to be thanked. I understand that if someone is introducing you, yes, a thank you is fine, but we have to be careful. And I have been guilty of this too, where I start with thank you and then I am down the whole rabbit trail of, I'm so happy to be here. I'm thrilled. I'm excited. We've got to get out of that pattern if we want to be influential and speak with impact. So what I would recommend that you do is think about what is something that I could start with. And even the example that I gave earlier, I would edit myself a little bit on that. Sometimes when we say, I wanna start with the story, that's already those extra pleasanties we don't need rather than notice the difference. I wanna start with a story about da 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 versus it was July 21st, 2021. I was sitting in da da da. It's such a different experience because you're creating a scene that is plopping them in right there to that date. Something to think about. First of all, a lot of us have this perception that we're not good storytellers. I hear this a lot. Oh, I don't know how to tell stories. I'm not good at storytelling. You don't have to be good at storytelling. 
all you really need is to share an example. If you're going to tell a story, consider an example, because that is another powerful way to illustrate something. And that way people will go, oh, I get this concept better. I mean, again, I don't need to tell you this, that an example and a story are very similar, but a lot of people have this perception that they have to be good storytellers in order to be a good communicator. Of course, stories are great and powerful, and we will talk a little bit about that. But what I want mostly for you to focus on is starting a presentation strong. So one thing could be a story. Another one could be an analogy. So maybe it's something like, you know how you're driving through, you drive through a toll booth and you have to, uh, you, you know what, that's not a good example. We'll take that one out. <laughs> like, where am I going with this? <laughs> but you get the concept of an analogy. And as a matter of fact, what comes to mind for me is an example when I first started a corporate training job and I was presenting and the head of the company threw me off, but I'm so glad that I have, uh, I'm pretty decent at thinking on my feet. He said, Karen, in the middle of presenting to this group of people, Karen, compare that plant next to you to leadership. And I had to come up with something. I said, well, this plant is like leadership. Specifically, it is important to be nurtured and watered so it can continue growing, just like all of us here are leaders who are continuing to grow and we're encouraging the people that report to us and the people that we lead to grow as well so that we can thrive. And the important thing is you've got to keep watering your plants to make sure they stay alive. It's the same thing with leadership. We've got to keep nurturing and coaching our employees so that they are at their best. That was an example that you could throw out there at any time. So this is a good thing. Now, most of us aren't <laughs> thinking about communication every day like me but it's really good to get in the practice or the habit of noticing how you could come up with analogies. So even like that, maybe every day, here's an action item for you. Every day you notice something random, a random object and think, how can I relate that back to whatever your topic is? For me, it would probably be, how can I relate that to communication and confidence? So an analogy is one. Another could be, a statistic. So it might be something like, did you know that 90% of all people do this or something to the tune of a stat that's going to grab people's attention and get them thinking. And this reminds me, one of the things that I find sort of funny, most people, for most people, this is common sense, but I have to say this because I was very surprised once in a corporate setting where someone said, does the opening have to relate to your topic? <laughs> and I thought, what? Well, I, I was very surprised at that question because I was thinking, of course. <laughs> and it reminded me about people that try to tell jokes that are unrelated just to break the ice. And then they go into their topic and it can feel really disjointed because the joke you assume is taking us in a certain direction. And then if it doesn't take us somewhere, it's not only disjointed, it can take away from your credibility when you do that. So make sure if you're going to lead with an example or a story or, or analogy or data point, it's definitely related to your topic because that can be ground that you don't want to walk on. It can be, it, it can be just uh, not a good, a good result. So making sure that you are giving your audience what's going to grab their attention the most. The other thing to focus on is perhaps if we go with, let's excuse me, if we go to, through a, a small review here, story, example, analogy, data point, oh, joke telling, why not to do it? Some of you or whoever, if you're listening to this, maybe you're a good joke teller and they have gone over well, but for most of us, we are not very good joke tellers and oftentimes what happens is we think we're funny and we're actually not. <laughs> and I hate to break it to you, but that is often what happens. I have seen some of the most well-meaning people be very committed. I'm going to tell a joke. I'm going to tell a joke. And then they tell it and the audience doesn't respond or laugh. And then they don't know what to do. 
That's actually a very good also reminder for what do you do when the audience doesn't respond as you want them to. This is something where preparing is really helpful. Making sure that you know in advance, here is all the, or here are all the, the possible outcomes of this particular situation. And if you can be prepared for that, that's gonna help you have a much more successful talk, whether it's a formal presentation or whether it's simply presenting something at a meeting. Now, one example I remember to further illustrate this point is I was walking into a talk when I walked in the middle, in the middle of it, there were about 50 people there and the guy was a little bit dry. Now, as soon as he brought up a story about San Francisco, he was a San Francisco historian. And as soon as he started talking about a story or an example, all of a sudden people's energy, you could, you could almost feel a shift in the room. People's energy shifted it, physically. They were moving a little bit in their seats and kind of leaning in. And I thought, Oh, this is such a great illustration of the power of story. Because if you're presenting a lot of data and you're dumping that on people, people are not going to receive that very well. And I know that we have this tendency when we're presenting that we feel like, oh, I have to prove myself. I have to get all of this out there. That if we can recognize the power of using an example or a story and then bringing the data in, or leading into the data so that the story is connected to that, it will be a much, much more influential talk. That is really important to focus on all of the different things that will come together to make you come across as more influential and impactful because let's just face it, that's what we wanna be. Let's talk a little bit about how to make your stories come to life. A couple of key elements to story is number one, concrete details. The second is emotion. Concrete details are really important. And there's, it's hard sometimes to balance, you know, how much detail do you put in versus how little do you put in? Basically, you want to think about what would get them to picture it and imagine themselves being in the scene. I used to do a lot of work with an executive development program with United Healthcare. And I would be coaching teams of six for six months to get ready to present to the executives. And one of the things that became really important for them is to be able to tell a story in a way that brought the audience in. For example, what often, it's funny how many teams came to me with this idea of, oh, I'm okay, we're gonna tell the story of this person waiting in the doctor's office and how hard it is to fill out forms and obviously a different story each time. But the concept was they were telling a story about someone else. For example, it might be, you know, John Smith was sitting in the doctor's office and blah, blah, blah. And I suggested, which I'd recommend to you too, is make it as if it's the person listening to you. So instead of John Smith, it would be you are sitting, imagine, imagine is a great word to start with, by the way, that's a fabulous and important word to start with. That is a number one tip for how to start a presentation. Imagine you go to the doctor, they hand you a clipboard with 10 different forms that they want you to fill out. How would you feel, especially because you were just at the doctor the day before and you had to fill out the same amount of forms? We are going to help solve this problem by changing that model here at United Healthcare. That's an example. Simply getting the person to imagine they're there not only will help them picture it and notice it's a concrete detail, they're in the office. And the second one is the emotion. What does it feel like? If you can get them to feel something, that will com really compel them to action or compel them at least to be more engaged. So emotion, really important. And it could also go along with the imagine. Imagine, and you all know that smell when you're sitting in da 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 da. Now that could be whatever it is, da 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 da. That's a really specific example for you. But the goal here is to tell a story. So there's concrete details 
And if you can get your audience to feel something, that makes such a difference. For example, there was a woman who was trying to get people to donate blood at the blood drive where that she is volunteering for. And the question really became, well, what are you doing right now to talk about it? And she said, well, I'm telling people to donate blood. And, you know, my, the, the people that I was working with at the time, we all looked at her and said, well, what if you started differently instead of donate blood? Because how many people were signing up? Not very many. But if you can say, I was witnessing a situation with someone who almost lost his life. And you could get into the details of, you know, it was a 10 year old boy that now obviously you have to tell a true story, uh, but it's getting into those details where you could say this boy's life was saved because somebody's somebody donated blood and he was able to get that transfusion and now he is living a healthy life. You can do that too for someone. You could save a life. So the, com the compelling emotional draw is you can save a life. Oh, how do I do that? Well, guess what? I've got a blood drive down the street or at the whatever street. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my words today. But the difference is you're drawing someone in and that's going to make them feel more compelled to take the action that you want them to take rather than just giving them a bunch of information. One other example is someone that I was coaching who was presenting to the board of directors and his job was purely financial. He said, look, Karen, I'm a numbers guy. How am I going to come up with a story and an example for this? I said, you need something. Let's think of something. Let's brainstorm ideas because he was so focused on just here are the numbers. I report the same thing every year. Then he had this brilliant idea and he goes, oh, I know when you walk into a sporting event, what is the first thing that you do after you get your, your drink and your popcorn, you walk on into the stadium or not into the stadium, into the stands. And you look at what the scoreboard, that's what we're doing here today. I'm going to give you the scoreboard of the company over the past quarter. Do you know, this is a true story that happened. It was a client that I worked with and he got more compliments about his presentation than he has ever gotten before. So that was a real win for him. But how about you? What is it that you're trying to get across and how could you create more engagement right from the beginning? So again, starting a presentation, you always wanna start with something that's going to be memorable rather than a data dump of information or jumping straight in to your, your example. You want to, or excuse me, you wanna avoid that lovely bunch of words that those pleasantries up front of, thank you so much, so glad you're here, I'm so excited, I'm so thrilled. Get straight to a story, an analogy, an anecdote, a reference to a past event, something that's going to grab their attention through an example that will be illustrative. And if you're telling a story, make sure that you've got concrete details as well as emotion in there, because all of that is going to draw us in and want to listen longer to you as well as take the action that you're asking us to take. That's a bonus. How do you end a presentation? Make sure that you make a specific ask. More on that later. Have a wonderful rest of your day and let me know how the tips worked out. And that's a wrap of another episode of Ignite Your Confidence. I'm your host, Karen Laus. Thank you so much for listening. If you love today's episode, please subscribe and leave a review. It helps other people find the podcast faster and it certainly helps me. If you're interested in more tips and tools around confidence, please join me over in my Facebook group called Ignite Your Confidence with Karen Laus. Remember, you too can stand out with unshakable confidence. <laughs>